Welcome, Ark Hunters, to the Defiance Cast, brought to you by the Dizzle Roundtable! Oh, yeah, I'm so pumped! Yes! <laughs> awesome! Yeah. Oh, that was so great. I am Nabil Steele. Joined here with me is Brink and Sabu from the Digital Roundtable. Brink! What we hope to do here with the Def Defiance Cast is what you think it is. We're going to cover all things Defiance related, Defiance news, updates, lore, whatever comes out Defiance related. We're going to cover it, hopefully. If yeah. Try on shit to that, we're going to use it. The reason being is this is one of the newer projects that's been presented by Tryon and Sci-Fi that we are completely stoked over. I know I and uh, and Steel here are huge Sci-Fi fans, and this show has the sweat in the pants. Oh, yeah. I oh, have we're, some we're Sci-Fi yeah. fanship, but I'm mostly... Fans. came out of nowhere to us, and we're like overly excited yeah. about it. Um, so we're going to go first into the major topic today. Yeah. What is Defiance? Yep. Um, I guess I can give a pretty good synopsis of it right now. So, Defiance, going through uh, paperwork here, <coughs> is a post-apocalyptic sci-fi collaboration between Sci-Fi, the cable network channel, and Try On Worlds, uh, the game developer that everybody knows develops uh, MMOs and MMORTS games. Um, it is both a TV show and a game set in... The same universe with parallel and sometimes interconnecting storylines. Uh, some of the characters are going to be in both the game and the TV show. And the TV show is set to take place in St. Louis correct. and the game in San Francisco. That yes. is correct. Yeah. Beautiful San Francisco. Yeah. Um, if you've never seen the trailer, of course, go check out the trailer. Um, but pretty much the world is being taken over back by Mother Nature that's kind of steroided out. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, yeah, supposedly... Uh, it, the world's been terraformed, right? Earth Correct. has been terraformed or hybrid terra. Or I don't know. I don't understand the full right. thing about it. But I know they said that it's created like hybrid species of uh, animal life right. and, and things like right. that. Yeah. And uh, trees are look different. Fungus looks different. I mean, you have giant size, freaking. Let's just say mushrooms and mm -hmm. Mother Nature got a work over by some people wearing Prada because it looks nothing like Earth. It looks amazing. <laughs> it looks sick, man. The movie, yeah. the show, and in game look pretty amazing from what I've seen on screenshots and, of course, the trailer. Yeah. So mm -hmm. once again, if you haven't seen the trailer, watch it. It'll get you stoked. It'll get you pumped. There's some gameplay videos uh, floating around now too. If, if you want to see, sorry. Well, there's two sides to this. You can see the actual film footage from what the TV show is going to show off. Exactly. And then the in-game stuff, there's a video of that as well. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, other people get to go cover the games while everyone else can't. Um, I guess let's move in to talk about the game first, and then we'll we'll jump into the show right, right. after. So, um, the game. What is the Defiance game itself? Well, the game. You lost it. It is an online open-world shooter. Similar to like uh, an MMO uh, FPS or just an, an MMO, any MMO yeah. in the general. But the best old... example I can think of is Borderlands 2. Yeah. yeah. Well, close. I would say it's a hybrid between like Borderlands 2 and kind of Mass Effect 3 ish. Correct. With that over the shoulder kind of look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can um, see that. As a shooter itself. Mm -hmm. But to me, I guess it's closer related to Borderlands. It, I, to me, it's as if Borderlands. Uh, Mass Effect and Halo had an orgy, mm -hmm. and in this orgy, a massive tripled, amounts of orgasms. Tri tripled DNA baby came out. Oh shit! Yeah, that is the game. They left yeah. out the plasma. No wait, no. Oh, there's a plasma gun. I don't know if they call it that, but uh, I see it's there. The <laughs> from what I see from shit. the gameplay floating around, there's like streams of like beams going everywhere and stuff like that. So. Unlimited power gun. Yes, I seem to. <laughs> <laughs> and now, young one, you will die. <laughs> well, supposedly thousands of players are going to be exploring a post-apocalyptic Earth, searching for lost alien technology. 
Um, you can either hunt alone or hunt with friends and level up to unlock powerful weapons, skills, everything you need to survive basically in this world. Mm. Um, there's large amounts of weapons and armor to choose from. Um, and you can level them up individually from what I hear. Uh, you can gain skills through leveling. Uh, choose, you can choose to play as uh, either a human or uh, another alien race, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. You I don't right. know that alien race's name though. We'll get into that later. I think. Um, are you talking about the one from like the TV show or the one from the trailer? I'm talking. Well, actually, I'm talking about the one that's in the game. Yeah. That is the Itherent, I believe they are called. Itherent. It's. I've seen the name floating around because I've only. On the website, they said there's about eight alien uh, races, but I've only seen about four listed in the character section, so I don't know. According to the website, um, regular updates will continue to change the world of Defiance. Um, they're going to have dynamic events, which I assume are going to be like Guild Wars 2 style, um, right, like correct. your whole public type of event that everybody shows up to because they can see it happen. Right. Yay! Um, um, and basically things that will just give you something new to do every time you log in. Um Completely open world too, from what I understand. Right, right. From where you go seamlessly yeah. from place to place. That's pretty awesome. Um, inve- events in the game will have a chance to uh, impact the actual show premiering in April on the Sci-Fi Channel. Now, I heard uh, a little off bit, which I wanted to cover later, but we can cover it now. Okay. Um, the executive producer stated in an interview that even though that the show and the game are running parallel side by side. The players within the game do not effectively direct the, or uh, do not directly a, directly the affect the plot of either. Right. Baby yeah. steps. Well, from what I read, um, the players mm-hmm. themselves do not technically. From what I read, the way it plays out is uh, per se. Um, there's an event that leads up to the next episode, right? And the event, and it's exactly the scenario that I read online said say the event uh you have to take something down right but in you taking this down it creates a storm in the area that while it is circulating through the planet is going to pick up and you'll see that in the show oh so you see what i'm saying they make world events that they know people will complete and in that world event will change what's going to happen in the show so it's kind of pre-scripted already yeah but it's cool because it makes you feel like you're involved in the sh- in the show already yeah. what that's if what i read the players refuse to do that event i'm pretty just sure. so they could see I'm pretty what sure it's part of the the story arc where you're half to gonna yeah. complete it Damn. to continue so forward. as far as like if the players don't want to do it it's like everyone just just log off everyone don't do anything <laughs> <laughs> let's let's fuck with the script writers for a second here they didn't do it in game or it might Shit, be rewrite. vice versa. It might be vice versa, where if something happens in the show, and the next update probably, oh, like say, a storm comes through Same. in the show, right, in St. Yeah, Louis, yeah. and one of the characters is like, oh man, I, I feel sorry for people on the West Coast, because it's going to be ten times worse, and then in-game it's like, <laughs> oh my god, this is shit! What the hell? <laughs> you know, so, you know, something like that might happen. But that's what I've read, where as far as that world events will proceed through the show, and in the game something will happen where players will be forced to take place in something that's pretty interesting it'll happen like now the game is releasing on uh, all three major platforms correct uh, the PC master platform of course right um, master and it's also race. releasing master on master race uh, the Xbox 360 and the, and the PlayStation 3 which is um, cool because I'm gonna laugh at people who are using a controller and dominate them in first person shooting now but, I don't know if they specified if it's gonna be cross platform meaning that all players across all platforms will be on a same central server Correct. and on the same shards. I don't know if that's a possibility yeah. or if they have that planned yet. Um, that's something I'm going to have to email them about and find out. Yeah. That would be very cool. Yeah, that's some was. bit of information that would be really cool to know. Mostly because there's yet to be a game that's really successfully executed that. What? I think what's think Universe about it? tried that with PS3. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the problem here is, is what's interesting about it is that well, we there's going to be PvP in this game, right? <laughs> right? Through the whole Shadow War system. Um, and then, yeah, the, since there's PvP in the game, that kind of may be a problem when it's cross-platform because a lot of people argue well, that the console players are at a disadvantage 
because of but that's that could be an easy fix in the sense of when you actually go into the PvP matchmaking system. Yeah, it'll, cu- it'll couple it you, separates. Right? Okay, it separates yeah, yeah, yeah. in the PvP system. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. that could be a simple fix for that. Because the open world PvE, I don't think that would be a problem. No, not yeah. at all. I mean, you'll probably see you know the PC players doing a little bit better as far as damage put outputs going. Plus, or plus the chat system. I mean, how would that work? Like, well, you know, Xbox and PS3 controllers can add a little like fucking touchpad so you can type shit. So I'm in. a PC guy. I gotta sit there and wait 30 minutes yeah. for this guy to finish a sentence. Yeah, like, it, know, it pretty or, much or depends on could, how good they're <laughs> texting at. They could, uh, they could do something in the sense of a party chat system, or they could uh, do like a voice. Oh, a voice yeah. system. Yeah, yeah, they could do a voice party chat system. Yeah, system. That'd be cool. That's or something. The that, way that yeah. we kind of like World of Warcraft attempted to do it. Which they still never Wait, yeah, is that never like fixed. fixed yet? No. I don't think it's fixed. Pretty much what they try to do. I mean, I've heard people use it, so I guess it's kind of user side. You got to kind of mess with it. Mm-hmm. But as far as that, if you're in a general vicinity, if certain feet away from somebody, you can hear the voice chat coming from them. And it'll pop up on your screen. Kind of oh. how Xbox does and then PS3 do it. Yeah. Um, pretty well, they do it. Um, but PC has yet to kind of. That would be something interesting if they put because, it. Because, you know, we can type. So. Yeah. Really fast. Yeah. The VoIP system would be good, especially for uh, dungeons and things yeah. like that. Um, or major, like, actually the, well, that could get annoying at the same time, too. Right. Yeah. If, they, if, if it was toggleable. Toggle-able, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. Um, no, some games toggle. don't have toggleable VoIP. Like, oh, here's a perfect But this example. is going back to where, once again, PS3 and Xbox's. Uh, uh, Those aren't toggleable. Those are totally right. like. Okay. Can I, about can I finish my idea? Is that okay? Is that, is that all right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As far <laughs> as their um, their speech active, like you know how when you talk it activates yeah, the microphone. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very it's very well made. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like uh, anyone that's ever used Ventrilo or Teamspeak or, or something in that sense where you breathe on your microphone and it you know goes off. Unless somebody has like a really high end Turtle Beach type of microphone, then yeah, when they breathe it picks it up. But still, when somebody has a standard issued like Xbox Live microphone. It's very well. It works very good, and you know it only works when they actually talk. Yeah, so sensitivity is really low. Something like yeah. that. You mean that 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 would not be so annoying. But I'm sure if they do that, they will have to put some kind of like mute option. Oh yeah, what I meant is like having a option to completely turn yeah. it off. Like say say if you're if they make it in proximity, right? And you're at oh, yeah. you're at a live of like an event in game. Yeah. And oh, there's God. fucking 50, 60 people there, and there's those fucking five, six year old kids that are like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm like, turn it off! Turn it off! Oh, uh, yeah. My nephew was playing. I'm punching buttons just to find the menu that turns it off. Like, My, my nephew God. was playing call Black Ops and Black Ops 2. All, all, all I heard is this little kid, penis, 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 for like 10 minutes. I'm like, shut that fucker up. <laughs> God's sake. And I, and I could only imagine being in a group of 50 people. There's going to be at least 10 kids going penis, 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 penis. <laughs> so, yes, they should. They better put, if they do, all that. I and mean, that's something that we need to look into. Yeah, it's speculating. Yeah, but I see. haven't seen much on it. Um, to wrap up some stuff, for those of you who don't know uh, the developer Try On Worlds, they're an American-based video game developer and publisher, Mark. Um, which focuses primarily on MMOs, particularly MMORPGs and MMORTS. If you know the game Rift, you're probably familiar with Tryon. Uh, the company was founded in 2006. Um, they developed, wow, obviously, uh, Rift. End of Nations is their uh, MMORTS, and their third installment now being Defiance. I couldn't yep. get into End of Nations. One reason being is because I fucking suck at RTSs. That's probably why. Yeah. That would be a good reason to not play a game. To not play an RTS. To be bad at it. Well, I, I like playing the single players, but that's a multiplayer-based MMO RTS, so I can't play. Oh, the new StarCraft, uh, Heart of the Swarm, uh, they're revamping their whole matchmaking system. It's supposed to make it easier for noobs. Yay! <laughs> that's not a side note. Anyways. It takes me uh, about an hour to Defiance play cast. an army. Where we talk about Defiance. Defiance! You know, 70% of the time. Yeah. 70 it's a, actually a pretty good estimate. Anyways, today anyway. we talk about cats and bathroom turns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my cat? Moving on here. Um, I guess that's a pretty good wrap up of what the game is itself. We'll go into more detail um, in a subsequent uh, episode. But we're going to move all right along to the TV show and give you a rundown on what the TV show has to offer. Um, 
Yeah, the TV show itself. Um, some quick notes here. Um, the Defiance TV show is sci-fi's epic new series from the minds behind Battlestar Galactica and Farscape. Yeah. It's set in the year 2046, where humans and aliens must newly coexist following a long war. Uh, the show follows the interconnected lives of the residents of Defiance, which stands on the ruins of what used to be St. Louis. Correct. Now, is the Long War the Pale War, or is it the Battle of Defiance? Because I've seen those two words tossed around a bit on the website. Yeah, I'm um, sure there's what I've seen lore. from the trailer, the Battle of Defiance is what's going on in the show. Okay. So it was the Pale War that's yeah. the long battle. Okay, because makes sense. In, if you see in the trailer, you see, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit, the mayor of Defiance saying, this city is worth fighting for. Mm. So Okay, interesting. Uh, the show itself, as well as the game, although I heard some speculation that the game is going to release before the show. Don't know yet. Well, don't quote me on that. But the show itself is set to premiere April 15th at 9 p.m. with a two-hour episode. Nice. So that's always good to get. It. I like when they premiere a show and it's very long. Like yeah. at least, at least It's got to be at least an hour well, to two hours. That tells you that they want to make sure that they put out enough content in the show to be like, okay... You now know what you're in for. Yeah, because yeah. I want to know like some little backstory, what's leading up to, you know, what's going on. Yeah. So that I kind of understand and follow what's going. You know. Yeah. I want to be hooked. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Two hours is a good amount of time to get hooked. The series itself, uh, at least the first season, um, is going to be 12 episodes long. Right. Aww. Which is decent. Yeah. That's pretty average, I guess. Um, for a new show, yeah. yeah. For a newer show, it is pretty average. Um, for newer shows, actually, like sometimes for sci-fi shows, you'll see seasons go up to only like eight episodes. Um, it's because they're taking such a huge risk with the sci-fi show. Yeah. So they want to make sure that they don't dump too much money in it. Um, Cheapskates. The show itself is set on Earth, um, depicts a futuristic boomtown set in set on the ruins of St. Louis, that is now home to seven alien species and Earthlings. Right. Seven so eight. species, which I don't know that any... I know... Right. The so, Botans? Oh, there's... Bo dude, there's so many. Okay. I can name about <laughs> four because I was looking at the characters that they listed on the website in-game. I noticed that there's a group called the Sensoth, which look like giant upright apes, but they're clothed. Okay. There's the Liberata, which look like little lizard people. And I saw. Well, he's a businessman, so I don't think he goes man, man, man. A little more businesslike. Man, man, man. So, and then there's the Indogene, which look like the white bald people, which I don't know. And then there's the Erythitin, which are the ones that are in the trailers. Erythian, maybe. Erythian. The Erythian. The paley ways guys with hair. They're not that pale. They have weird noses. They have like oh, a really bad, flat. Yeah, yeah, go. they have a flat mm -hmm. nose bridge. Oh. And yeah, that's all I think I saw on the character listing. Yeah. So yeah. And then there's something called the Votan, which you corrected me on, which is like an alien alliance. It's not a, okay. When they talk about the Voltan, from what I read, I could be mistaken. I am. I'm sorry. From what I read, the Voltan is when you speak of like in a whole all the aliens. Oh, yeah. well, I could be wrong once again. Sci-Fi, the uh, the the channel itself, um, brought to you or brought you shows like Battlestar Galactica, um, Stargate, the whole Stargate yeah. universe series, um, and Farscape. So, well, it, for a good thing, Sci-Fi, like Sci-Fi related, Stargate started on Fox. Oh, and then they, they jumped, jumped to ship okay, to yeah. to. Well, most recently, I watched the whole Stargate Universe series, and I was yeah. like, oh, sad that they, they canceled that. Yeah. But, you know, okay, this is bringing they up a good... a lot of good this shows. Is, yeah, this is bringing up a good topic. Sci-fi tends to cancel good shows Cause the, for no reason. The viewership's not there. Yeah, that's probably it. The viewership isn't there. That's why. But so the viewers making... they have are, like, so passionate about them. Yeah. Look what happened to Firefly. Yeah, I know. That's, that's I know. one right there. Like, God damn. I know. I completely understand. The problem is that viewership. It, it's the viewer system. It's the way we count ratings. The system is so stupid. Yeah. The What is it called? Something family system where they randomly pick a certain amount of families and they send out these boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so dumb to me. Honestly, 
Because, I mean, how many... Is that you why know, they canceled Eureka? How many lonely nerds get one of those boxes that fucking watch this show? And there's a lot of them out there that watch these sci-fi shows. I bet you not many. So To be honest, I think they should have... Well, they should have used the budget that they have into it right now, but yeah. turned it into a web series. Yeah. You know Defiance yeah. cast, we're here for your lonely nerd needs. I didn't have... Okay. I think they would get a big. Well, I, we don't know. We're judging now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But because they go the way there's a big viewer. Okay, base the way the rating them. system goes is, of course, who's watching, how many people watch, and then who's watching. Yeah. If they feel that, and that's where the family thing comes into play. Mm-hmm. If they feel that there's not that range that they were looking for, and there's not enough people on there, and then they kind of compare them, and they're like, okay, well, it's not worth it. So, I mean, what do you Those do? Sick son of a bitches. They canceled you. Luckily, Rita, man. To me, it looks like that they set. Both of these, the game and the mo- and the the TV show up separately enough that if one were to fail for whatever reason, mm-hmm. the other one can continue. Correct. That's how it seems to me, at least. And I'm hoping that this picks up. Oh, I'm pretty sure that not only, of course, you know, they want to release the game because it's it looks like a pretty solid game, and you know, but also, how many fanboys have been waiting for an MMO like this? Yeah. That are gonna watch the show now. Yep. You know, they have two so, things exactly. to look forward to in the same house. Exactly. And people that, you know, maybe just like sci fi shows are now maybe intrigued to play an MMO. Exactly. Yeah. They want to check out the game because it's part of the it's whole universe. Benefits yeah. both sides. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I think it's just hard to do a sci fi MMO because, you know, aside from where in a fantasy realm, you've got your swords, your bows, you know, primitive weapons take a really long time to kill each other. Sci-fi world? Well, okay. Now I just contradict myself. Because if it's a sci-fi world, you have advanced armor and advanced weapons. So the advanced weapons can't really hurt you that fast. So it takes a long time to kill. Okay, never mind what I said. All right. All right. I that's just, that's all I just yeah. counter-argumented myself. <laughs> <laughs> that solves that one. I was waiting for my opportunity to jump in. But he got himself, so it's okay. <laughs> um, but you know what we haven't talked about yet? Which uh, I'm sure you can fill us in on, Sabu. All right. Is producers, cast, all these people. Not producers, I forgot that. Oh, well. Not producers. Okay. <laughs> well, executive producer, I actually have that here, is uh, Kevin Murphy. Uh, Sci-Fi's president is Mark Stern. Yeah. So, let's get into this. I got a pretty small list, actually. Um, if you are into the show, hopefully you are if you're listening, and if you're not into the show and you're listening... I am only going to cover what I believe are substantial characters. That's fine. The ones that I saw in the trailer, and I actually, I think there's one that I, nope, they're all in the trailer. And then, of course, the writers um, and the director. The game characters, which there are some that overlap with the TV show, and then there's some that are specifically in the game as game main characters. We'll cover those later in a subsequent episode. I. Okay. All right, um, please forgive me. I have chicken scratch writing that even I can't understand sometimes. So I might fuck some of these names up. <laughs> Good. I'll tell you in advance. Hello, um, wheels. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you don't know how to read on, there's not just an end in on. So we'll I didn't just see the end. <laughs> Did I, whatever, man. <laughs> so let's get right into this. <laughs> Hold on. Immediately. To explain this scene, he lifted the paper really close to his face. I can't read this. I I gave myself a quick note and I can't fucking read it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, the director. The director, to me, is the one guy that I'm actually super stoked over. Okay. The director has a huge resume that should give any fanboy, any movie fanboy, a fucking boner. Okay. Nerd boner. Nerd boner. Yeah. Nerd boner. Director's name is Michael Nankin. Hi, Nankin. Okay. Don't know if I pronounced that right or wrong. It's probably Napkin. Nankin. It's There's a joke. It. I'm going to slap you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he is known for his direct his directing on. There's a quite substantial list on here. And I actually had to cut a lot out that I would be like, it's not that significant. Oh, okay. Um, Hell on Wheels, which is the AMC show that came out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Western show, really good. It mm-hmm. is amazing show. It's a good very series. well directed. Also, yeah. amazing show. Um, another sci fi show, Alphas. Oh, Alphas is good. Yeah. I follow Alphas. I yeah. kind of like it, but it never hooked my interest. Yeah. So he directed some of that. Also, one of my favorite sci fi movies um, that I believe did not get hyped enough 
Red Faction Origins. Ooh. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow, he he directed, he directed Red Faction. That. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, Caprica. Caprica, yeah. He directed that. Caprica series. He did I some watched. directing uh, directing work on CSI. Oh. Which if oh. anyone knows CSI, they pretty much everyone knows CSI. Yeah, <laughs> if you know CSI, as far as like in depth, uh, they swap directors like every other show mm -hmm. um, for being that they want to keep it fresh you know yeah. like that. especially on a show like that you, it's kind of hard so oh, they do yeah, it with those that. things go on um, <laughs> trauma <laughs> are you ready uh... <laughs> all right trauma if you guys don't know what trauma was um it a show that kind of didn't do too well because uh, the concept, um, they, the first episode was kind of gritty, kind of, uh, fuck, I don't really want to watch this. Uh, okay. It's about EMTs. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Firefighters, things like that, kind of revolving around their world and the kind of shit that they go through. Um, pretty fucked up show. I don't know if they canceled it or not, but I know it lost a lot of viewership. Because I don't know. Just how gritty the story is. Yeah. Um, hey, man, Heroes. Like... Heroes. I Heroes. fucking love Heroes. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's A plus to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, flash Forward. Flash Forward, I Another watched Another really Flash good yeah. sci-fi. Flash Forward, pretty much, uh, it was about this moment in time where, boom, everyone goes to sleep. Yeah. Whoa. Everyone wakes up, and all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Because no one knows what happened. No yep. one knows why it happened. And it's pretty much the story of following, trying to figure out what's going on. Yep. Jesus. Um, and then, of course, Battlestar Galactica, uh, Eureka. <gasps> I love him even more. Terminator, uh, Sarah, Connor, uh, Sarah Connor Chronicles. That was an alright show. Um, and then, of course, my favorite of them all, Monk. I oh. love Monk. Too. Yes, Monk was such an amazing show, especially with a mystery show like that, a detective show. It's really hard it's... to direct those. It is really yeah. hard to direct those. Um, a lot of people don't understand that because the way they film, sometimes they film the end at the beginning. Yeah, and for an actor that's kind of rough because if there's an emotional scene in between and they already filmed the ending it's hard to direct that it really is so they did amazing work on that because Monk has a lot of that shit oh man Monk is I don't know don't tell me about Monk I don't know have you ever seen the set series all of them are the same except for the last uh, the last season it's different there's like a red line that continues on and the last one it's moved up a little oh because Monk has OC right movies. I thought it was cool. Okay. Hi. <laughs> so, um, once again, if you're a sci-fi fanboy and if you are a movie fan or a production fanboy, you should understand that this is a huge deal. The guy is an amazing director. I'm happy they brought him on board onto this. I'm happy he agreed to this, um, especially because it's a little different than what he's done. Even though he's done Battlestar Galactica and shit like that, it's a little different because it actually takes place on Earth. As far as Battlestar Galactica had a lot of space Shit yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit different directorial view on that. So I'm stoked about that. Dude, I'm stoked about the guy doing the music. Yeah. That's, that's the really guy sick. that did Walking Dead's music. Yeah, so that should be Ooh. really good. I also forgot that. So there's that. Um, as far as the writers go, they are taking a huge, huge risk on this, in my personal opinion. Okay. Um, and this is why. I'll go over the first writer. The first writer, they're not fucking up at all. This is an amazing um, pickup. All right. Um, but, I'm gonna fuck this up. Rockin S. O'Bannon. Pretty sure I fucked that up somehow. That's a <laughs> bitchin' name, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's correct. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, he um, <laughs> he's written for V, the series. Oh yeah, v. yeah, yeah. Um, wow. He did Farscape, of course. He did uh, some work on Twilight. Let's not, Twilight Zone. Let's not talk about that. Twilight Zone. Twilight, Twilight, Zone. Oh, Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone. Twilight Zone. Okay. Twilight, Twilight Zone. Okay. Twilight Thank Zone. God. I got it. I was like, chicken scratch. Whew. Chicken scratch. Chicken I was scratch. about to say, Twilight. I'm like, I, I don't know how we're. Uh, Twilight Zone, was. guys. So, Twilight Zone. I fucked up. I thought it said two, and that's a Let's Z. Let's pretend that never happened. So there's that. And then uh, he did oh, work on something called Alien Nations, which had a bunch of different uh, spins on it. I've never heard of I it. Never heard I'm going to look into that to see if it's any good. Um, and then he did a, a bunch of different titles that I just didn't feel were worth mentioning. Okay. Um, and then, of course, there's the next three, which I'm just going to rant off because I'll tell you in a second. There's Clark Perry, uh, Craig Gore, and Tim Walser. Walsh. Tim Walsh. Tim Walsh. Chicken scratch writing, guys. <laughs> um, the reason I just kind of skipped over those guys is because I looked into their um, accreditations as far as like uh, what they were accredited for on writing. Each of them only had about two. And in those two, Defiance was one. 
Oh. Um, that's why I'm saying they're taking a huge risk because these guys aren't really... They're new. Yeah, they're fairly new, um, which could be a good thing because they had the head writer, of course, I'm assuming, is the first guy. Um, he could has, be fresh. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, it could be a fresh twist, yeah, yeah. you know? And I'm sure that, like, sci-fi wouldn't just hire somebody just, you know, fucking lollygagging around, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but their head writer, of course, is he's seasoned, so he could help them out. Mm-hmm. And, of course, make sure that everything goes well. Well, there must have been something impressive where sci-fi got them onto this. Yeah, yeah. Of course, all my information is coming off IM- IMDb, okay. which a lot of people know that um, if you are, once again, a film boy, um, is a not-so-reliable source to go off of. Reason being is that sometimes they'll do minor work and never get accreditation for it. Mm. Um, so there's that. Um, More digging is needed, yeah. maybe. As far as going into the cast, if you have looked into Defiance, you'll under- you kind of... St- You'll see the trailer and be like, I have no idea who half these people are. Yeah. Actually, these people. Yeah. So, um, then, it, but you know what? It's a good my thing. argument, my counter argument to that is that a series that I love to this day still, Firefly. Right. None of those people in there right. were really known at all. Right. And, and they I came out of nowhere that. and wowed everybody. Yeah. So, I was going to get to that, but you already said it. Sorry. So. Go ahead. Um, we'll start off with the main character, of course. Uh, his name is Jeb Nolan. Jeb Nolan is kind of, from what we understand so far, kind of some sort of a bounty hunter, ex-marine mm-hmm. um, kind of guy that has adopted, um, took it under his wing, I'm assuming, another character by the name of Arisa, and she is an alien. Yeah. yeah so that's where she's that conflict comes through. Arisa. Yeah. 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 Um, so we'll start with uh, the character of Jeb Nolan, which is going to be played by Grant Bowler. Um, Grant Bowler... He's, uh, once again, not so famous. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but from yeah. when I see in the trailer, once again, really good actor. I'm surprised that he hasn't got such good roles. Once again, I don't know. I haven't seen any shows yet exactly. of it, but we'll see where it goes. <clears throat> um, he's been in um, Lost. He was in The Lost World. Okay. We remember that old sci-fi show, Jurassic kind of part yeah, yeah, of the yeah, yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was in Farscape. Okay. And also, he was in The Cape. He played a character called the uh, Razor. Hmm. So, I don't know. That's pretty significant. Never and he was The Cape. He was also in Killer Elite. Now, uh, my thing with that is, <laughs> I love that movie. It's not that great of a movie, but I love Killer Elite. And I don't remember him. I see him, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't remember this guy. Who is he? So, I, I, when I saw that, I was like, <laughs> was he in this? And I went up fucking Killer Elite and I looked at a bunch of pictures and I was like, okay, all right, he was in it apparently. So there's that. Um, once again, going back to he's not that famous, but it could be a good thing, you know? Okay. Especially when you get a lot of thirsty actors, which from this list, there's a lot of them. <laughs> you get a lot of thirsty actors that want recognition. Um, from what I've heard from one of my, uh, well, when I took theater, my theater teacher said, if you ever want work in Hollywood, try to get into the sci-fi game. Why? Because there's so much sci-fi being filmed even if they never make it to tv as far as pilots and shit go there's so much out there there's so much work out there in that area but this is a huge thing and a lot of sci-fi uh, a lot of bigger actors don't want to do sci-fi yeah yeah they feel it's kind of like a kitty game so that's a cool thing um once again like i said these are going to be thirsty actors that want to make it big finally hopefully they'll put all their work into this and it'll be an amazing show i don't want to see the show fail so mm. continuing the character of Arisa, which is, once again, his uh, adopted daughter of yeah. some sort, is going to be played by Nicole Munoz, um, which is really interesting. If you see, uh, if you want to see how good their um, uh, makeup. makeup is, uh, look at her picture and then look at her picture in the show. You're going to be like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, they have some really good and talented yeah. uh, makeup artists on their team. Yeah. Um, um, one of her newer movies that are coming out. Which I am somewhat excited for. She's currently working on it. It's under filming at the moment. Oh, yeah. Is uh, Chupacabra versus the Alamo. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just thinking something else. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. She is going to be in that movie there. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't worry. It gets better. Uh, she was in Marmaduke. And Don't. the Tooth Fairy. B is for better. Yeah. She was in the Tooth Fairy with The Rock, if we all remember that such good movie. I don't remember the Tooth Fairy. My <laughs> my mother, movie. however, loves yeah. that movie. She so was she... in that. And she was also in a B movie. 
I read Hardwire and I was like, oh, the action movie that came out last year. Yeah, it was all right. No, it was a B movie <laughs> with Cuban Gooding Jr., which everyone knows that his career's falling off very hard and he's doing B movies right now. Um, so she, once again, not much under her belt. Not much under her belt. She's done a lot of TV work. Um, I believe. No, there's somebody else. Uh, yeah, she does a lot of TV. Work. The Alamo yeah. Oh yeah, bro. Hey. <laughs> Hey. Don't talk shit, bro. It might be one of the fucking... She's working, okay? Yeah. What are you Fuck doing? You. What are you doing? What are you doing? Um, <laughs> Over here. Okay, here's some of her better work. <laughs> this is going to tell us why she got added on to this. Uh, she was in Sanctuary. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. She okay. was in Pathfinder. If we remember, Pathfinder was kind of like that Viking-ish movie that came out uh, uh, a couple years ago, about four or five years I ago. I think it... Pathfinder was supposed to be something about... Uh, I think it was related in the Highlander area. Yeah, I know. I remember helmets and yeah. Vikingish looking stuff. It was gritty. Yeah. Um, if you're a hardcore fantasy fan, movie wise, she was in The Last of the Mimsy. Oh no way. Yeah, she was in that movie. I'm sure she was a little girl in that movie. So that movie is really old. Yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty sure she was she was a little girl in that movie. Um, she's done some. Um, she's done some TV work on Supernatural. Oh. And also Stargate. Oh, there we go. Atlantis. I like so her that kind TV of sh- resume more than her movie yeah. resume. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I uh, the Pathfinder was all right as far as a fantasy well, movie goes. Was, and The Last of the Memes, M- Mimsies, it was a good movie. It was, it was a good movie. Yeah, a movie that didn't get as much recognition as it should have. Um, but Supernatural and Stargate Atlantis, it's really good. Continuing on, we have The Mayor of Defiance by the name of Amanda, which is going to be played by Julius Benz. Fuck my writing. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's done a. Uh, we'll she, type this up next time. Yeah, <laughs> she's done a lot of uh, a lot of uh, film uh, TV work. Uh, as far as she's she's been in Dexter. Uh, oh, she was okay. in Royal Pains. Wow. Uh, she was also in Desperate Housewives. Uh, and you know how successful that's been. Yeah. So she was in <laughs> that. Um, she was also in as far as movies go. She was in uh, the Boondock Saints too. Um, she was in Saw Five. She's in Boondock Saints. Yeah, I, I got a kind of. Uh, this was the second one. Yeah, well, it was the well. second one. I was gonna say, um, and also the Punisher Warzone. She was in that movie too. Oh God! Um, going back to TV, she was in Supernatural again. Good, Ooh, really okay. good. She was in Angel and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That tells us she was actually a pretty big role in there because they didn't transfer over just shitty roles to both. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh. yeah. Um, and Roswell. If we remember the Roswell show yeah, that was that's on. Old. The CW before it was a CW a long time ago. That's so old. She was in that. Um, moving on to what I'm assuming are the bad guys. I'm not too sure in the, the trailer. Antagonists. Yeah, they yeah. look like they're the antagonists. Uh, the, uh, the character's name is Detac Taver. Um, I hope they have a shortened name for him on the show. Are they, are they white? Yeah, the, the white guy with the long hair. Okay, I don't know yeah. if they're bad guys. Um, I saw se. him cracking think... someone's head with a gun to her throat, and he was smiling. I don't think a good guy does. No, that. no. Oh, I think okay. That, <laughs> I I read like a quick uh, synopsis, something about like he. Is he, are there he part of started it? off like as a nobody from where he came from. He looks like he's a leader of a cult. And, and then when he got here, like he became like a big businessman and like became powerful. Yeah, yeah. He looks so, like an Indogene then. And something about white. there's something about his wife too. Yeah. Where they were from, like, different classes within their... Yeah. From their home world. Like, she was, like... High. You know, really high up on the class-based system. And, like, she was, like... And he was really low, you yeah. know. Yeah. If you want to yeah. get some speculation going in your own mind, watch a trailer. Yeah. That's all I can say. Uh-huh. Um, he is played by Tony Curran. Now, the thing about Tony Curran, he's been in some major movies, but he's had minor roles. And that's kind of a good thing because you don't put... Even in major movies, they don't put him in major roles. By major movies, I'm speaking about... Gladiator, uh, Underworld Evolution, oh, wow. Tintin, wow. Um, which he had to do voice work for. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. and of course, uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I awesome. love that movie. Oh my god, that yeah. movie's amazing. Um, uh, as far as uh, and he was also on Blade, uh, Blade Two. He played a uh, priest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was his credit. <laughs> priest. In Gladiator, he was assassin number one. So. <laughs> At least he was number one. Yeah. Um, he was At also in Doctor Who. Ah, ooh, what, yeah. What was he? Please. I don't know. Fuck. I'm gonna have to go look now. <laughs> yeah, cause... he was also in Doctor Who, um, and also once again, if you want to see amazing makeup work, look at him and then look at his character. They did a good job. Yeah, uh, it's not that hard to make a ginger pale, but still, he looks really good. Um, and then of course his wife, which is Stama Taver, of course, is paid by Jamie Murray. Um, 
She's in the straight to video version of Fright Night Two. Um, Warehouse Thirteen, Spartacus. Ooh, Warehouse Thirteen. She's oh, the she's... second season of Spartacus. Remember the uh, the red haired girl with the green toga? I think yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she was that was her. Oh. Um. And then the major. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm assuming this is their star power. Um, his name, uh, of course, being Rafi, which is the um. He's like the richest guy in in Defiance. In the oh, he's the mine. Is he the mine? He's the mine owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the mine owner. Um, yeah. He's like the richest guy there. You know, whatever. <clears throat> um, he's being played by rich mine owner. That's what that says. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> he's being played by. Uh, I'm gonna. I swear, I'm gonna type this out next time. Uh, Graham Green. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just got that. Is he played by Rich, mine owner? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I fucked that up. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, I thought I was like, that's. If there's okay. any children listening, guys, pay attention at school when they're teaching you how to write. Um, you won't run into this fucking issue. And parents, please teach your kids how to write eligibly, because you're gonna have this problem. Um. Uh, you might actually remember him. Um, the two major roles that I could pick out from him that people might remember him. Um, he's uh, uh, so. Uh, wait, what was his name? We never. Got I, yes, it. I did. I said it. You no. guys were fucking laughing. You guys, uh, Graham Green. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you guys remember him, he's uh, the uh, Native American looking uh, cop from Die Hard with a Vengeance. <laughs> no? Way over my head. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Green, the green Mile. Yeah, the 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 Native American looking prisoner. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. the one that the very first guy that gets executed. Mm. Yeah, him. That's okay. that's him. If you see him, if you guys uh, look up his name or see him in the show, you'll be like, this guy's in fucking everything. Oh god, he puts out like two or three movies a year, B movies, but still. No. Um, uh, he was in Dances with Wolves. Wow. Um, he was in the Twilight <laughs> series. Rich Miner got to eat. Look, he was in the Twilight series because it's really hard to get an older, uh, you know, older looking Native American gentleman that's recognizable. All right. Was he part Don't of judge the him. werewolf clan? Yes, he was. <laughs> Don't judge him, man. Don't judge him. Actually, no. Our credibility just went to shit. I know. Look, I no fuck Twilight. I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying support Twilight. I support, support this guy. He's a good actor, man. Yeah, he. Um, and he's uh, he does a lot of uh, Broadway work, from what I've heard. Oh, then hey, yeah. nothing wrong with Broadway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like a good musical. Bro- if he, can um, get he was in Broadway. Snow Dogs. Oh, yeah, he was in Snow Dogs. He was also in the very shitty adaptation of Turok. Oh my Damn, god, yeah. was an adaptation of Turok. Yeah, it was fucking horrendous. Oh god. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, that's the only ones that I wrote down. Once again, there's a lot of actors in this series. Couldn't really cover. If I did, we'd be here for fucking hours. But um, that seems to be their their golden ticket right there. I'm assuming he's a great actor though. And he looks in shape in this movie, which if you follow him, always fat. In the show. Hmm. Nothing wrong with fat. I'm just saying, dude. He's older. He needs to stay in shape. So, yeah, the cast lineup, once again, we said um, it could be, uh, you know, iffy. But from what I see in the trailer, the acting is phenomenal in the little snippets that I've seen. Um, there is cats having sex outside. No, um, that's just my old cat. But, yeah, the, the, the cast has the possibility of doing very great. Hope yeah, I agree. I hope it's one of those stellar casts. You know, though they're not so well known, but you know, this is going to be the thing that, like, that you know, really gets you. off. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's going to wrap us up here for the uh, first installment of the Defiance cast. Let us know uh, what you guys think. We want to keep doing this. Yeah, we're we're really excited about the the whole thing. We want to keep pushing this out. Um, if you guys want to hear different stuff. About um, the show and game in general, let us know. We can uh, dive into that yeah. um, and give us some feedback about this. Yeah. Totally. Also, if there's anything that you're confused about in the show, because I know there's a lot of information, message us and we'll go over it because we'll learn with you. Yes. Yes, we will. <laughs> For now, I think we're going to do this as a weekly thing, maybe once a week. Um, although we could we could probably do it as a bi-weekly thing too. It yeah. depends on how much information they pump out. Exactly. Really. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure at the... the when the show comes out and the game releases, probably doing it weekly and then as a slow down, we'll do it. It's gonna fucking yeah. explode. They're just gonna say, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, well, theoretically, we can do it weekly because there's always a new episode every right. week. Correct. So we always have something to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And that's gonna wrap us up for the Defiance cast. Um, this has been Nabil Steele, Brink, and Sabu.
And if you have heard about our other show already, it's the Digital Roundtable Podcast, where we cover gaming news and whatever the fuck we want to talk about. And sometimes we take things seriously. Yeah. Not Very really. rarely. Yeah. But we do. You want to sign me? Want me to sign us out? Yeah, sign us out. Because I don't know how to sign. I don't know how to do this one. All right. Stay tuned next time, our hunters, for another exciting episode of Defiance. Cast. 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 <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>